Get involved in your political system. Don't say, oh, I don't have to vote. I don't, and the reason you speak English today is by one vote in this country. Otherwise, you always speak German, by the way. And I do speak German uh, at times, if I have to, to communicate or something like that. Uh, with somebody, I don't want to hear somebody else. But sometimes I can also listen to other people and they don't know I'm listening. So it's an advantage or disadvantage at times. Uh, yeah. How long have you all been in Fort Collins, all of you? All your lives so far? Mm -hmm. How long is that? How old are you? 15, How old are you? 15. 15? And you? 16. And who's the oldest in the class? Yeah, he's sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but uh, this is what I want to kind of bring in something, of course, because some of you think, oh, that World War II, this was before time. Oh, it is very good very, uh, to today's day, because World War II came because of World War I. And now we had all these different wars we have talked about within this country, to save this country, the Civil War and uh, things like that. And um, this is what makes a, a country great when people get involved uh, as a family and uh, in, in everything else to, to make a country great. And, uh, and here comes Jean, and she, uh, when it happened two years ago, you started talking to me, right? About two years ago? Uh, I wrote a book on 27 different people, what happened to them with during and after World War II. There are a lot of tragic things in here. I haven't read it all yet. This is my copy she gave me. And, um, but there's a picture in here which I kind of, you see this picture? This one? Guess who is that? It's me. <laughs> and that's the first, one day before my first day at school. And in Germany, there, uh, when you uh, go to school, you get this canister of, full of candy to kind of soften you up, I guess. And then next day, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know what school is all about, in a hurry. Uh, over there, the school is different than over here. There, uh, it's all school, by the way. There's no football game, there's no band, there's your school. And when I came over, uh, over this country first, I wonder what, do they have school too? Evidently, you all have school here too. And then you know, in how many months are these going out for summertime? Two months? Two or three. Yeah, two and a half months. Well, we had at the most one month. So uh, it, uh, it was kind of interesting. They, they, they changed between one country to another one. Then here's some other pictures she put in. By the way, have you given any of those pictures back here? You better do that. I'll, I'll send my mother. I promise. You. Yes, I promise. I'll send my mother. I said, well, that's pretty bad when she comes. <laughs> Uh, this is um, the okay that we could come to this country. Uh, it took three years to be approved as a, to come to this country. In, in investigation by the immigration, uh, the Gestapo, the IRS, oh, I got that all wrong, <laughs> pretty close the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't pay your bills, they're going to get you. And you had to have, the health had to be in order, plus you had to have a job. So, and then uh, this is the next picture here, so I'm actually running forward a little bit, is when uh, my mother and I became a citizen. And I have my little boy who is now telling me what to do with my arm. <coughs> in fact, he and I are in business together here at Wildlife Photography. So, now I'm going to go back. Uh, as I was enrolled, I'm going to, sorry, get these pictures here. Uh. 
uh, she get an award as a pimper, and they're about seven years old, and there's no volunteering that you will go there. It's not like Boy Scouts. Now talking about Boy Scouts, I have, here comes another uh, student, I have a seat, sir. <laughs> I gotta turn around and leave again. I just want to make sure we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling? Excellent. You got it working? We do. I erased it. I, ra it? I, I videotaped you all day yesterday. You're checking to be sure. And, and then the I erased you. Yeah, you need to say exactly <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Except for those jokes you made about me. We can talk to each other like that, right? That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> but in the pimper, then you grow up as an older guy and become Hitler youth. And that's around when you get to eight, nine. And you learn a lot of things about the war, and uh, you be taught like the war. Uh, but the Boy Scouts, as I said, I had two boys. Both uh, boys made Eagle Scout, Order of the Arrow, and what is the other one? Uh, palm. Did they get, so they got Eagles, did they get the palm? Because you started agreeing with me, so you, you know something about it. Uh, being a Boy Scout and the Council of Girls have a similar organization. You learn so much, plus it puts a good uh, a bench between you and your sons, uh, knowing each other. I've made every merit badge with those boys, and there's 21 merit badges to become an Eagle Scout, plus a project. And also our project was, whatever we wanted to do, but it had to be good, we had to put a carpet in our church uh, in, in the choir room, and, and I can never will do that again. <laughs> uh, but I'm going back further. How did I come to this country again? As I said before, it took three years, and another four years after that to become a citizen of this country. <coughs> and this is where I have this other picture here, where we were sworn in. The same day I was sworn in as an American citizen, my mother and I, I was also sworn in in the Houston Police Department. I took the academy and went through it, they're called auxiliary police, or the civilian police. In Germany, I was after the war in the volunteer fire department. Now, I'm coming to go back some more. My dad did not agree with the system uh, Adolf had put upon us. And uh, so, in fact, he came by and he could stop over our house at times and look through the books and picked him up and booked him, beat the hell out of him right there. Um, took away our car, took away our radio. What would you say if uh, the local police comes in your house and take your radio and your television away? What would you say? I'm not sure. I think it you wouldn't be sure that it's okay to do that? Why? It's unlikely. I can't quite understand you had to speak up. <laughs> it's unjust. Uh, okay. I don't, have to, I don't want to pick on you, but I just kind of need a, a little feedback. And um, why did you take that away from us? Number one, my dad did not agree with the system. Number two, he was accused of listening to radio stations beyond the German borders. Now, if you listen to a radio station like with you, to a radio station in Utah and uh, trying to find out what the Mormons are doing, you know. <laughs> over there. So we get a lot of them near the building in the temple. Uh, that would be against the law. And they put you away. There was no communication. By the way, there were probably 10, 15 percent of the German people were Nazis. Most people did not agree with the system after they figured out what it's all about. Uh, and uh, what a minority will do to a majority. So we went from there. Then, uh, as time got worse, uh, we were uh, to be fighting um, the anti aircraft guns and load them up. Again, as I said earlier, they picked up, they picked us up in a truck and they went from there. My knees are kind of hurt. Is it all right if I sit down? Thank you. Yeah, I've got. I also have a, a chair up here that you can raise or lower if you'd like. Uh, <coughs> it might be a little bit more comfortable. I made that yesterday over at the CSU I spoke. 
and I had to walk so far. And in fact, I have a major operation on my left leg tomorrow uh, because of circulation. There we go. Thank you. Is it all right, Bob? It's perfect. Oh, yeah, okay. <coughs> so, uh, yes, I uh, forgot my thought there, but uh, what was I talking about? Um, the radio. <laughs> huh? They took the radio from me because. What? They took the radio from me because. Okay. Well, you listen, that's it, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you said you said fifteen fifteen percent only about fifteen percent of the German people yeah, were yeah. Nazis. What the Nazi? It's abbreviation actually. Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei. It's a work people, a people to work. Now, if you didn't join the party, you couldn't even get a job. Plus, you had to wear the Nazi emblem and so forth. But there were a lot of other organizations who didn't agree with, like even church. The church went down as long. <coughs> Hitler made the, did the weddings and the funerals and all this kind of stuff. It was all done by the court Nazi party. And uh, a lot of people, even like the, the Masons and the... Uh, the people, the gay-oriented people, were put away, and uh, and if they didn't like you, they would put you away too. Uh, but as the ordinary citizen in, in Germany, we did not know that there was a concentration camp because we, we, there was no communication. You see, the radio we could not listen unless we make it really private uh, to listen to when nobody hears you. But if somebody if we were in Germany today, one of you would be Judas. Who would it be in this class? Turn me in, and they carry me up before I get done here at 2 o'clock. This is how it worked. And uh, for the, um, it, it, it was just a total chaos, but nobody could trust each other. Just recently, a guy, uh, a friend of mine, Sir Odoi, uh, came back and said, when, uh, they're not uh, they're smiling over there. He was over on a business trip. They're still not smiling. I mean, it's an overall the German people because there's not too much to smile about yet. That's 60 years later. They're still kind of nothing to each other. In fact, I turned my own dad in and I didn't know what my mother told me. I said to my little friend Fiddy, and they're about my age, and then I don't know exactly the age. Um, it's a good thing we don't have a flag so that we're going to hang one out. Well, Philly said this to his dad, and dad saw the authorities, and they again saw my dad and beat the hell out of him. I remember those things. And then I had to figure out why. Because I turned actually my own dad and I didn't know it. Uh, you know, if, if you want to, I have pride now, and then I think Bob too, uh, waves the American flag uh, every day, and I take it in when there's bad weather. In fact, right now I've got it inside because of bad weather coming in again, and I have that honor, the American and the Colorado flag. And I encourage you to maybe talk to your parents uh, to do the same thing, to show you who, who you are for. You with us or you against us? You have heard those words before. <coughs> this, is, this is the greatest country uh, you ever want to see, and to, to me, it looks like it's been divine uh, organized. Now, somebody come in late? No. Uh, divine, the so same as my own life. Uh, the different things that happened. Uh, another thing happened to me, uh, one time I was doing the war, I was down running the street for some reason, and the voice told me to get the hell out of that area. And I did, and shortly thereafter, I Hell broke loose with bombs. Now, would you ever want to hear a bomb or artillery? Well, the first time I heard a bomb, I was on the Baltic Sea with my mother. Uh, she had a little vacation there from me. She worked for the city of Hanover. And uh, they went up on bombs on us in the ocean, uh, the B 17s. Sometimes you probably see the airplanes here out at the airport, the B 17s, and the uh, B-26s. Uh, I tried to get in it. I'm too big. I can't even get in it. <laughs> <coughs> but 
this is how as we saw by the hundreds, the big old formation over there, over there, and a fight up in the between. Uh, and the whole ground would start breaking. If they would come, we didn't even have the sirens come up, but we noticed when this, the ground was shaken. Uh, that is what was going on. They're coming in. Uh, uh, and uh, can you imagine you know, 80 or 80 there, or some uh, B-17s? Now those guys up there were just as scared as the guys down here. When we, in Hanover, we had the Hanover Ring, uh, where they put us into the anti-aircrafts. Uh, uh, we were shooting uh, the 8.8s and then some 10.5s, the caliber. You have heard about the big 8.8. Uh, maybe seen pictures of it. It was also a very good anti-tank gun. And man, it makes a hell of a lot of noise. And uh, you had earmuffs. And, but they, they, they helped us to, or we helped them to carry these cartridges actually to the gun. That is how we got involved. But before we had some dive bombers come uh, uh, out in our bunker where we had the ammunition. Um, i never seen them. You know what a P-38 is, some of you? Um, the double tail. And they could come this way, and next thing you know they're coming back this way. They could turn around. i never seen a plane uh, turn that fast. But it's the same plane. And it was unbelievable uh, with those things. And they come real low. Uh, you know, it's, it's a scary thing. And as they're coming to the, more to the end, and of course we all pretty well thought it was, the whole thing was over with. Uh, but uh, then uh, we were involved in Hanover, uh, in, the, in the first bombing raid, actually, in Hanover. Uh, I was looking out of the window, a bathroom window, and I saw these cannons go off uh, over the area. And I said, oh, what the hell is that? And I found out in a hurry, because what happened, I studied later on, there were planes coming in that dropped candles, and then the bomber formation would fly into that area and, and carpet bombing. Now, carpet bombing was done to people, not, like you may hear in radio or read in books, uh, to bomb industrial areas, like whether they built tanks or airplanes. They were still working. In fact, at the end of the war, the big factory in Hanover, uh, the Hanomark was still making tanks uh, and trucks made in it. And if you see those trucks even today on the road in Germany, the Hanomark. Uh, and, uh, and I had some friends, in fact, I know uh, a friend of mine and his father at that time was a, a consulting engineer to put, uh, design the, uh, the, the tracks on tanks. Uh, and I had another guy who was uh, involved in, uh, in, in the ship design and so forth. Um, but as things got getting tougher and tougher, um, they, uh, we were then, uh, I lived in a little town of Bukkerboy. They moved us out of Hanover because we were completely bombed out. And we had a, a right straight hit in where we lived, my mother and I. My dad was gone, the Nazis had taken him away already. Uh, and I don't, we didn't know where he was. And, uh, and after the war, by the way, I found out that they killed him. Um, and uh, because of not believing what the government told him. And now, do we have some similar situation? Have you heard of it? I want you to think about that. You, uh, we are still, and I say still, a free country. But I want honestly say I don't know how long much longer. Because people are not getting involved. I said, let Johnny do it. You are the future generation of this country, and it's your obligation, really, to be a leader, you know, if it's a, a Democrat or a Republican or whatever party it may be, but at least vote and make your voice shine. But vote intelligently. Uh, listen to the people who actually talk, not what the press tells you. I have given talks in, uh, way back in, in, in Denver when I lived there, and it was in the paper and didn't even recognize it, how they changed it around. So I'm making a point, and we just hope that uh, Bob someday, uh, oh, I don't want to say anymore, <laughs> uh, will be uh, one of our shining stars uh, in our country. Uh, 
because this is the greatest country and divine inspired uh, to, and it's my own life. And if I look back now, I'm 82 years old. How my wife had, life had gone by, what had all happened in the meantime, and how the ups and downs in your life, and you will have ups and downs. There's no such thing as perfect because the reason you're here is to learn. You're learning something now. I hope you all pass your tests. <laughs> um, my background is in electrical and industrial engineering, but um, I later on worked into human engineering. Can you imagine what human engineering is? I became an insurance salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and then the insurance manager for New York Life. Have I heard of that company? One of the bigger insurance companies. And I retired from that. But I hired people, I trained people, and I fired people. Now, who did I fire? The ones who didn't want to work. They saw that money hangs on trees. And it, it doesn't hang there. You've got to get it. <laughs> but going back to World War II, um, we later on, they put us on the trucks again and uh, actually, my mother worked for City Hall. We were bought under, my, my dad had a client who was a mayor of this town of Bookerboy. He took us in, my mother and I. And uh, my dad had a real good way of figuring out what's wrong with you. With saliva and urine samples, he could tell right to the point what's up and I made blind people see again, I couldn't believe it. Uh, we had to practice actually in our, in our house. And uh, it's, uh, you, know, you don't know how tough it can be. Uh, some of you have seen that movie, um, uh, uh, Book Thieves, by any chance. Um, if you have a chance, look at it or get the tape off. Uh, and uh, my wife, when I went in, I didn't know what I was gonna see. But it really explained my own life. I was kind of squirming in that movie. She said, what's the matter? It's just like, uh, it's like I lived it, you know, and the different stages under Hitler, Germany, and so forth. Um, when I was uh, smaller than you are, uh, and you saw this picture here, it was about a little older than that. Um, we went to, uh, with my father, uh, to Nuremberg in the southern part of Germany and to medical uh, thing. <coughs> and we lived in Hanover. And um, in fact, my dad said, uh, if you should have air raids, you all jump in a car and drive out of the city. By the way, you don't even have time to put on your pants to before things start to happen. But we, uh, we stayed there. My dad liked that area close to Bayreuth. <coughs> and, um, we went to the grave of Wagner, Robert Wagner. You, some of you musically inclined in here, and uh, anybody, anybody play music? You all play an instrument, or uh, some kind? <laughs> I play radio. Or what do you play? I <laughs> play saxophone. Oh, very good. My wife plays the piano. We have a grand piano at, at home. We inherited, by the way, from her parents. <laughs> I almost ended up paying for it, one too, but I only had to pay for her. <laughs> and I'm still paying. <laughs> Dearly. <laughs> but uh, so all of a sudden, a, a bunch of cars that drive up there, and uh, who walked out of those cars? Old Adolf, good old Adolf, with his staff. And uh, gee, and it just uh, my dad, my mom, and I, uh, and the staff. So my mother said, and I remember that, but that's how, uh, why don't you go over there and greet the guy? I did. I went over there and say, <coughs> shook his hand, and I never washed it since, by the way, what you see, <laughs> and said, how am I in Cuba? Huh? As I was turned around, he stepped on my foot and my shoe came off. <laughs> that is my uh, thing of meeting Adolf. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of calm, but um, but also as doing Bamman rates in, in Hanover, um, as we lived there, we, we got a straight hit on the uh, on, uh, on our 
apartment building. It was a three-story apartment building. And, um, and if you can imagine, the, the apartment buildings over there, they're all built out of concrete and bricks, so not like here in by two by fours. <coughs> and there's a lot of, lot of, a lot of difference um, uh, for that. But if they put a hole into the, uh, we call firewall between apartment buildings, and lays the bricks back inside of it. <coughs> so, um, on each side on the bed, uh, each, there was a tub of water and a stack of blankets. Now what you do, that house next to us was on fire, we were hit. <coughs> we were actually sitting under the, where the bomb exploded. <coughs> and we were kind of lucky because the place where we lived was at a driveway for some garages in the back. Most of the part of Sutherland, sort of part of Hanover. And, uh, those people were coming in, with, uh, and then we ended up too, put the blankets into the water and then hang them over you so you could breathe from all the dust. <coughs> and the dust was unbelievable. And still from that I have today, uh, my lung has a problem with that, a plus uh, from asphalt, uh, that I cannot breathe uh, like I want to. That they analyzed it, uh, the doctor. Oh my God! I have a choice for you here. Yeah, put it right in front of you. What? Give it to me, please. I'm gonna give you a whole oh table. Oh my God! Just, you see what a kind of thing can do for you? <laughs> Hot coffee, cold oh water, God. or lemonade. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? <Okay. laughs> I know water is the best thing to drink, isn't it? Do you agree with me? So, uh, that's where I really had the first experience in a bombing raid. They say the bomb had killed you down here, that's true, because you did. But we as a Hitler youth were then organized, <coughs> where we were, the ones that were still alive actually, to look for other people in a rubble. Even today, when I go to any place, I look around how to get the hell out of there. Uh, even here, I will find out a way to get out of here. Uh, you never know, because what could happen. We could have a, you know, like to yesterday, have tornadoes around. <coughs> Not bombs, but I don't know what's better, the bomb or tornado. Or, uh, so, but uh, then we had to try to figure out where people were. In those days, we didn't have dogs. We used to have, listen to pipes and hear, if you hear piping, and somebody knocking on pipes, then there must be somebody there. Uh, that's what they made us do. Uh, I pulled a lot of people, dead ones and light ones, out of this as a group. Uh, we also made human chains in the apartment buildings, and uh, all the buildings over there are ceramic tile on the rope to cover. A lot of the uh, ropes were damaged even from the anti-aircraft, the shrapnels from the anti-aircraft guns. Uh, they come in, they explode up there, and this metal all comes down again and then hits his ceramic tiles and they break. Do you, are you understanding what I'm talking about? I'm trying to keep it as simple as, as possible. Um, I really appreciate this, but I'm kind of in a better shape now. <coughs> and uh, the, um, uh, looking a bit farther again now, maybe another year in the future there, uh, they put us in Bückeburg on trucks again, and, and this is how I got into this situation. They load you on trucks and don't ask questions. Uh, and uh, so they'll be supposed to defend the little town of Bückeburg. And I uh, said, oh, a lot of things in between happened. And uh, so we were in foxholes, there were actually three of us, uh, two brothers and myself in the west side of Hooker Boys. There was also a big music uh, academy, military music academy, and they had a lot of the people out there too. And uh, so uh, every night uh, the sky was getting redder and more noise and more explosions and, you know, we were in this foxhole. 
Uh, and I look at the military now, the soldiers today, they go to the mess hall and start eating. I don't understand that, how that works. Um, World War II was different. You, you, if you eat something, you, you better find it yourself but, uh, somewhere that during World War II. There were some uh, things uh, called a goulash canona, but uh, where we had some food and I brought some by. But when you're in this foxhole, the first thing I saw of an American, besides the bombers on the B-17s, is a jeep, there's a trailer behind and a machine gun on top. And there, there came before anybody else. And they went to a certain house. And why did they go there? But I had a suspicion because I knew the man. And uh, he was a fuckable design engineer for the manufacturing airplanes, fast airplanes and jet variety and all of this. And they knew exactly where this guy lived and they picked him up right there in front of us. <coughs> and after they left, the tanks came in, the, 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 um, the Sherman tanks. Some of you seen that movie, uh, Saving Private Ryan, if you... That's a later part of that movie, we were involved in that kind of fighting. Um, after they saw the jeep there, and uh, well, the tanks were coming at us. You know, they were coming from all kinds of directions, and I still remember this was a Sunday morning, I always thought happening. <coughs> we were in this foxhole there, and they're coming at us from two directions. And we had the Panzer Faust, that's all we had. We had another, I mean, it, we went strange a little bit, but not hardly anything, how to uh, work these things. and. Uh, but you had to put them on your shoulder and don't have anybody behind you. We probably got flamed out. But they were actually this uh, uh, thing kind of cone-shaped uh, would melt themselves under a tank and then explode. It would melt themselves through the tank. <coughs> but as you saw that movie, you were actually seeing German tanks being uh, attacked by Americans. But we were German guys being attacked by Sherman tanks. <coughs> you take ten Sherman tanks and one Tiger, and they go on the Tiger and play games with it, while the Tiger can't do anything. <coughs> the, uh, I mean, there was a right warfare that uh, numbers take care of it, like airplanes, the B-17s, and the air. But we were going after these guys and. But there were again too many, but we got two of them actually. <coughs> and then get the hell out of there. But what happened, the shrapnel hit the guy in the middle, which was one of the brothers. He was 14 and the other guy and me were 13. When you're in early in life, you see these bombing raids that I'm trying to explain to you, and you see the street fighting in the streets, in, in park swords, and see that. Uh, uh, how old are you, dear son? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, I was two years younger than him, trying to do the thing, because you had to do it. There was no question that you do it. I mean, if not, I don't know what they would do to you, but we figured they'd probably kill us from behind anyhow, because there were a lot of court Nazis there <coughs> who would look for you if you don't do what you're supposed to. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, that is, that's a scary uh, situation. There's, the best war isn't worth anything. Uh, the thing is, again, I come to this to get involved in this country's future. And I know some may be bored to death to listen to me, but um, it's, uh, if you don't do it, who will? Let me put it that way. We got some good other countries that have tried to help us, but we uh, have learned that a lot of times we are there by ourselves, uh, trying to quote, I guess, maybe the policemen of the world. But again, this country is still the greatest country in the world. And don't you ever forget it. But it's your obligation to keep it that way, by your, imp by your input. <coughs> and, uh, I think, Bob, you know what I'm talking about. 
what's going on today. And uh, you have any questions? You know, I may be doing all the talking here, but uh, any questions? Am I covering all the points? Did, did you show show them that uh, genealogy book that they gave you and asked you to to? Okay, uh, there was a the one one thing here. Excuse me. Can I get it? Can I get it for you? Uh, it's a brown book there. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, this is what they call an onpass. <coughs> and what it means is you have to go back in your background. Um, who you are, what religion you are, or what race you are. And uh, my mother had to get this filled out basically on me to find out if there was any Jewish blood in our family. Anybody a Jewish fellow in here in, in, in the classroom right now? Um, because she had to prove to the German government at that time that there wasn't because they looked into the uh, different areas and they have an emblem, they see the Nazi emblem uh, right in here. <coughs> and if they found one eighth in, uh, in, your, in your blood, they come and saw you and most likely we carried away but we didn't know where to. <coughs> we did not know that there was concentration camps, again I mentioned that earlier. We were not communicated, but of course there was no such a thing as communication. <coughs> By the way, they had the same thing for guns. They had to say your gun and it was taken away prior to that. So whatever you do about guns, uh, this is what happens in a totalitarian government. They take everything away from you and then they try to give it to you, uh, you know, uh, to control you. Do you, do you like to be controlled? No. And I do something about it. I don't like it. I mean, anything even comes to a certain religion or anything. <laughs> and sometimes I get controlled by my wife and I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can assure you they resist control. But, uh, I've tried <laughs> myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, uh, this is this book here, and I here show it, and uh, right here, in, right here in front is uh, my uh, document to come to this country, uh, which uh, have a, she took a picture of it in this book. <coughs> this is um, what my wife and I look like now. You see, you saw the little earlier picture was a little boy, now I'm an old guy, decrepit. Uh, and this is our 60th wedding anniversary picture. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can you make it 60 years with one moment? Because you better say yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am, how far, how soon? Uh, uh, give me that blue one there. there. All right, guys, thank you, Bob. Oh, you're here. You're right on the ball. <laughs> this book here is my mother and I studied about to become a citizen. Uh, we had, to, we were, as I said before, it took three years to be a, had a permission to come to this country. And that's a long story to even to want to do that. But then after we came over here, we studied American government for one year. <coughs> one night a week at the uh, American Legion Hall in Houston, Texas. And, um, then uh, that gave us tests as we go right along, uh, and then a final test uh, to go to an immigration officer in uh, in the courthouse in Houston. And uh, I knew I was going to have this test on my hand. And the guy said, "What you keep in this book?" I gave him this book. He said, "He opened the page, and he asked me questions on every page that was. That was a real experience. So, but they knew pretty well what we knew." <coughs> because from previous tests, but I just wanted to be sure. They were very conscientious uh, people in the government to do that. And it's uh, one picture I have here in this book again, and this is what Jean uh, utilized, um, where 
this one right here in front of the uh, uh, courthouse in Houston, Texas. And that's my mother here on this side. She passed away about 15 years ago. She was 86. This is my little boy, and Bob knows him. Um, he, uh, he and I in business here now in wildlife photography. We both used to be managers for New York Live. And this is me. Isn't that a handsome guy? Yeah. And this is my wife. She doesn't look that way right now. She is in pretty bad health. And, and, uh, and my, I'm not in the best health either. But uh, this is a CSU <coughs> pictures of that. I had an article in the paper at CSU here two weeks ago. Uh, this is my, my basement. I have a big model railroad layout in my basement. <coughs> if you like model railroad. And I built a model of the ship my mother and I came over on. A lifeline freighter. We were on the ocean, I mean, between Birmingham, Antwerp, and Rotterdam and New Orleans for three weeks. <coughs> That's the best way to travel if you have time. You don't get any hurry, you can relax. You can do anything on that ship you want to, just about. One thing I noticed, my mother was washing some clothes. And you hang it out for about, hold it like this on the ocean for about 30 minutes and it's dry. <laughs> you feel there's a, a moisture about this and it's all dry in a hurry. But it was a real experience to be on that, oh, I have some pictures on that freighter. So I'm trying to, how much time I have left? Anything? You've got as much time as you'd like. They have a what? You have as much time as you'd like. Oh, I have as much time as I like. Do you have any questions, by the way? I forget to you. How did you get away from the German army? And what? How did you get away from being in the German army at the time? How did I get away from it? I didn't get away from it. <laughs> um, the uh, Hitler used, we were attached. Uh, actually, to the army when we were doing all these things, they called it the folk storm, the people storm. And uh, if you see this little movie I told you about, uh, 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 Book Thieves, uh, it uh, <coughs> illustrates uh, in a really good way uh, that point. Um, because there was no choice. You, you were obligated to do that. <coughs> and if you didn't like it, that was just too bad. You were penalized. In fact, we used to meet on Wednesday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and some Sunday mornings. If you missed three meetings, they saw your parents about and see what was going on. And uh, you better be there. Otherwise, they penalize your parents. It's not like the Boy Scouts. <laughs> uh, and uh, again, I'm going back to the Boy Scouts. It's the best learning tool uh, for a young man to, uh, with Victor, for instance. He was an Eagle Scout about age 13. But again, it took a lot of effort by your parent to work on these marriages. I know we were traveling in the car. We worked on marriage badges two, three months at a time. And, uh, and again, I went to every marriage counselor because those guys didn't have a driver's license yet. <coughs> and the other guy, Allah Boyd, lives in Hawaii. I'm quiet. But uh, now our daughter lives in, uh, in, uh, in Littleton. And uh, she, uh, our granddaughter was somebody involved in the time when little high school uh, got bombarded. There was a shooters. Um, our oldest granddaughter down there is now in charge to organize a golf tournament in Cherry Creek, the BMW uh, golf tournament. She is in charge of it. Unbelievable. But she was in charge when she went to college in Indiana. And uh, she had visited us Sunday a week ago from, Houston, from Denver and up. And uh, she drove a $100,000 BMW. And uh, I, uh, with um, our daughter and her husband, and uh, the mother-in-law, you know, her father, uh, husband just died two, years, two months ago. But, <coughs> but she took us for a ride, you know, go on and uh, 
down the highway and put the pedal to the and then come back up more berry and so forth. But uh, again, that was a, a sudden. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry about this coughing. I, I couldn't believe it. It didn't happen before. <coughs> but uh, how you can create a good family life, even if you lived, have lived under obstacles in your life in early life. You all live in a fantastic early life right now. Uh, once you get out of high school, life begins. And you better be ready because it's a tough world out there. And I look at the world like in an aquarium. Uh, the strong survive. The other one will die. And uh, when I first came here, Memorial Day of 52, I learned in a hurry that this is different than uh, the government and things in Germany. I better save some money right now. And I saved some in those days, you could still save half a dollar, silver half a dollar. <coughs> and I bought certain things already because the engineer on the ship had a Zenith transoceanic radio. And I've got one of those. I still have it, and it works on two. And uh, I've figured out a way to buy that whole sale. <laughs> but this is, you know, and I still save money today, guys. And I have a funny way of doing it, but it works. It, it really works. And, uh, but you have to be uh, strong for it, uh, because uh, you will always have money. You never know when you need some more uh, from a bad illness or uh, something, or even a refrigerator goes kaput or whatever, <coughs> that you have money at the right time, or for an investment, too. So. Uh, uh, but not in a savings account. You even get minus, minus, and then you have to pay interest on whatever you're not learning. So uh, different countries have different modes uh, to survive. Over there, you make a dollar or you make a mark, and you only get 50 cents anyhow to begin with. <coughs> because they have uh, taxes, different taxes system than we have here, but uh, they also have a church tax. They take the church tax out of here before you even go to church. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's how, how that works over there. Um, but even if you're in Germany or any country, and I have talked to a lot of people who have gone here and gone there, they are always come, glad to come back to USA, and they're always glad to by the way, coming back to Colorado. Colorado, I think, is one of the best states. When we first came here, my mother and I, we lived in Houston, Texas. And I don't know, I was down there last June because of a high school reunion, 60-year high school reunion. Can you imagine that? And there were a few left, but there were, most of them were dead. I couldn't believe it. I had it all figured out. <coughs> but we drove down there and walked back. I rented a, a van. I work part time uh, actually for uh, for rental car system, and uh, then with my son, and then take care, literally take care of my wife and Jean. You know what we what we do in there, and uh, so uh, it's uh, you'll be tested in your life in many many times, many ways. What's the right thing? If you, for instance, a simple thing, if somebody gives you. <coughs> the wrong change back in the grocery store or whatever. Are you honest enough to say, lady girl, you gave me too much money. This is where it starts, where nobody sees it the way. This is a, this is a down, because in this country or even in, in the world, you come with nothing here, you earn something and you leave with nothing. Can you? Have you thought of that? Or how much you take with you when you die? Uh, but I have an idea. See, I have these electric cranes, and I told my wife, just melt one down and put the ashes in with it. This is how I'm going to save my cranes. 
do I have something to take? Because I want to play with it after I leave here, you see. Not just give it up here, but uh, it's okay. Uh, it's how you feel. And, you know, if you can, uh, as you get older, I can see where people see, you, and they really like to help you. When my wife is on a walker, and I help her people open up the door. <coughs> In Germany, under Hitler Germany, it was everybody out for themselves. Now, we have a little bit of this over here now. Uh, and uh, I'm sure you probably have noticed that already yourself. Because, but how can I, you know, if I'm down the highway, and, uh, and I wave at people when they let me in the lane I want to go to. I, I literally do this. I have the American and the uh, Colorado flag hanging out of my doors in my house. I would hardly recommend you may do that too. It doesn't take much. And I take it in, by the way. I took it in before the bad weather hit yesterday. Uh, because that, that flag represents the people, the United States, the original states, this state. Uh, and uh, in Germany, we had the swastika. You know, some of you see in, in some of the movies. <coughs> um, I have little thing. Uh, I'm a collector, by the way, uh, in little things. Uh, and uh, I have a little figurine of uh, uh, Churchill. I think Churchill, during World War II, one of the greatest statesmen, uh, have you ever seen how he made England to survive over Hitler? I have a little statue of uh, Rommel. Uh, I, I met one time his son after the war, and he later on became the mayor of Stuttgart. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, I met a guy who his father died uh, on, the, on the Bismarck. In fact, at that time when that Bismarck was sunk already, we all had thoughts. And I know exactly where I was behind the Hanover in the railroad station. <coughs> that thing came across. But his father, Tom Poser, is about his father was on the Bismarck as one of the executive officers. And the Tom and I worked after the war actually together down in Houston uh, for a pipeline outfit. That's how we got to know each other. Tom was on the on the German submarines and they surrendered to the Russians in the, in the Baltic Sea and they were loaded up on bread trucks. Uh, he didn't say any more after that. But uh, I had a cousin her husband was an officer, and he, but he survived the hospital person camp, and he died here about two years ago, but she took care of him. Now she's an Alzheimer's disease. My cousin, who was, by the way, the flower girl in my parents' wedding. Um, it, you know, with, uh, what a great place this is. That, you know, you can lay back and kind of listen to me, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, and it, you pay attention and you pay attention, and some of you don't, but the thing is, it's up to you how much attention you want to spend and how much you want to get involved from when you graduate or now. How soon are you going to graduate from the school? Two years. What? Two years. Two years? See, you have a lot of time to learn and gather about America. It's just... Uh, the, the greatest place there is, and I hate to talk like that, but that's the way it is. And it's divine inspired, and I think some of our fathers are turning their graves for what they see right now going on in this country. But it's still the greatest country, and let's keep it that way. And I go back to Germany uh, in the, some of my experience, and there are a lot in between. Uh, one time in the earlier bombing raids, we were sitting my dad was again was working out of out of our home under his practice, and uh, we were sitting there on the balcony, and all of a sudden the end aircraft starts in again, and uh, so we thought we better go inside because of shrapnel from the explosions of the end aircraft, and there was a, a one or two planes bombing a refinery east of Hanover, <coughs> but. Uh, and all of a sudden we hear this big bang outside. And what happened, one of the grenades that hadn't exploded, but they, they had come down and exploded right where we were sitting and bore a big hole into the wall. 
Now this hall was, you know, brick. And uh, we were downstairs and it saved our lives then. But everything else, we had a big rubber tree was completely shattered. But later on I found out <coughs> from this cousin, he, uh, he was in the German army. He was uh, captured in a Russian front, by the way, that was a penalty when they moved you from one from the western front to the eastern front. If you don't do the right thing on the western front, they send you to the eastern front. Um, and uh, so he was captured in the Caucasus Mountains, but he had a lot of knowledge about plumbing. So they set him up there to set up a plumbing system for this village. And one day he said on the side, I said, I don't have to do this. And he walked back to Germany at night out of the prison. He told me that later on, uh, how, how he did that and how it went. And how did he do? Because I had him with me in Han uh, riding to this, driving to this house in Hanover where my dad had the practice. And we drove up to it <coughs> and uh, I took pictures of it. And the people come running out. You know, this was about 10 years ago, maybe less. <coughs> and uh, said, why do you take pictures of this house? They're still scared to death people over there. What, what's, and uh, I said, I used to live here. Oh, so we, we got to talk and then they invited us in, Joanne and I and this uncle. Actually, he was a cousin to my mother. And uh, so we got to talk and, and talk about this air raid too because I was talking about the wall. I told those people, if you take the wood away from this wall, there's a big hole in there. And uh, so we got to talking. One thing we found out, uh, these people were renting the house, actually, and they were from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> it was an engineering department for a company out of Denver. But the other thing about the air raid there was that this one or two planes bombing that uh, uh, refinery in east of Hanover, they actually bombed, the, uh, have you heard of Jägermeister, the liquor, that big 88 proof liquor to drink? They actually were bombing that thing and that's a refinery. Because my uncle, I call him, worked for him and he knew exactly what happened that day uh, when we had that experience. So there are a lot of experiences you can have uh, when people get carried away and taken away. Uh, I went over there uh, to the gymnasium in, in Booker Boys. Uh, that is like high school. I don't know how to actually to relate it, but um, and then after that, I went to you have to uh, graduate from a gymnasium. Uh, and uh, I called it Adolfinium at that time, and uh, to go on to other schools. You have to have heavy tests when you go also from a, uh, from a uh, elementary school into a high school before you even qualify for the high school. I don't know how it is over here. I uh, also bought a driver's license. I used to renew my driver's license again for, for five years. <coughs> Um, I don't know if I'm still alive there or not because of my age, but I uh, tried. But so when you get a driver's license in Germany, it costs you about 2,000 marks to begin with. You first you take uh, a test for a motorcycle, which is basically on paper, and then you have to take to it. Then a car, and then a truck. It takes about a year. It's not over here. You write a, read a book, and they go down there. Pass a driving test for all the things you learn from the bad things you learn from your parents, uh, how to drive and how not to drive. So when that came about, and when my kids start driving, I took them. They all went to Weekly High School, by the way, in Lakewood, and um, took them to the driver's action. I don't know, but they did, did away with the driver's I don't know if they did here or not. But I think that was the most important program. I think for kids to learn uh, to drive and uh, not get killed in a car accident. Because that's where a lot of the, the dead kids come about. Uh, they have a drinking party at 
when they graduate from high school and up they go and, and into the heavens. Um, but it took that long to get a driver's license over there, and that much money, and studying. You learn all about cars and everything. So, um, anything else you want to know? <laughs> <coughs> I had a question. You mentioned, you know, being involved in the Boy Scouts, how you, you know, helped with your, your son's various projects in the Boy Scouts. To what extent did the Hitler Youth encourage any family participation like that? To or what? what? No, to what extent did the Hitler Youth involve families kind of in the same way that the Boy Scouts involve families here? Uh, actually, uh, I look back a very little. When the Boy Scouts, uh, it's up to the parents, really how they want to be involved in anything, by the way. Even in school, you know, I, mean, I could see at this school right here where the parents are probably get, uh, very much involved, and I saw that in one of the schools in, uh, in Denver, in Lakewood. Uh, there's a the Catholic high school down there. Uh, what's the name of it? In Lakewood, I don't know. Um, and uh, they have always a very strong uh, football team. And, uh, it, it see, you see the difference where the parents are involved in the schools. I mean, if I go to the, uh, the schools here in this town, and I go in Lakewood to the normal schools, and I was very much involved in the you know, school system in, uh, in Lakewood in Jefferson County, uh, the difference in the attitude of young people. And then, you know, really the wrong word for you is kids, it's not kids, that's a goat, you know. You're not goats, aren't you? And the, the young, you are all, we're all people in training, we train all the time. And if you have an open mind to listen, it makes it that much easier. But as you get older, you probably know more than your parents ever did. <laughs> but, in, in Hitler, you was, uh, I look back, of course, my dad to begin with, when I had to get in there, I was in favor, but what can you do when you have to? And uh, then it was my mother, and she, she didn't do too much. Uh, and then later on, then we moved to Brickerbush, we were bombed out in Hanover. Uh, it's, there's another thing, when we were bombed pretty well in Hanover, and then we still had a few survival things. It's like people looking around tornadoes. <coughs> they had some uh, German army trucks come in, and then you load things up on the on the section on this truck, and then have a 50 mile, a 50 kilometer radius going whatever direction you, and they said, oh, let's go west. So we went west, and uh, there was a road, and I still know, I could remember kind of, but then and uh, they're stuffed in front of a uh, farmhouse, and then this is it. Well, we had to talk to those people, and they took us in for the furniture and stored them in, the, in the, they call it a shrine, uh, where they keep the animals. Uh, later on, my mother and I were able to get that out of there, and uh, when we were put into some people who didn't like us, because the government said, you have so many queer feet where you live in, and you had another family come in. Okay, that's what happened to us, and also the uh, people got mad, uh, mad at you to begin with while, you, while you're being moved in there, and, you know, and, and then they had to uh, furnish us with some water and things like that, and they put a water line up. Every time we got cold when they were on top, the water line was looking like this. When it got cold, I had to take a candle and kind of warm the, the pipe up to get the, to get the water going. And then it's just things like that. It just uh, makes you go up in a hurry to figure out how to survive. And uh, this is maybe one thing if I can help you is to survive in life. Because it, the, long, the strong ones will survive and the other ones will just be mediocre. And I've, I've known people, known Bob on the school, you won't be mediocre. And I would, uh, and any time somebody wants to talk to me or anything, uh, feel free to to call me or let Bob know or a teacher or may, Mr. Mayor and uh, I, I'm happy to help whatever I can do. Sit down and talk. That is sometimes important. Uh, 
just to talk and listen. Uh, you can do a lot of uh, things. Uh, a lot of the uh, foreign people come into this country. It's an amazing thing how they excel. Well, it comes from the area of what they learned at home. And the home is a very important point. And that's when my wife, uh, she wasn't even a lady, not anymore, but she stayed basically at home. And uh, when the kids come home, that she is there. Well, when I, in the late time, my mother had to work. And I had was home uh, by myself for a while, and it wasn't easy. I got in some, some close calls. But, but this is part of growing up. But it starts with your parents. Uh, and some of your parents don't have time for you. you take them by the neck and tell them, I don't want, to, I don't want your time, listen to me. And then this is where the, even the Boy Scouts came in. The boys and I worked together. And uh, my daughter, she was at a boy and the Girl Scouts, but uh, not too active. But the, the Boy Scouts, we had to contest to sell cookies or whatever it was, I don't know what. But uh, we came up with the first prize uh, in an area in Denver, and uh, the son of won the typewriter. I mean, you set, uh, 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 set goals like that uh, and then try to achieve them. And, and I've got another question. I don't okay, want to sure. stop you mid sentence. Sure, <laughs> can, can you uh, briefly discuss the. Uh, the, uh, at the end of the war, or after the war's over, and uh, I, same question I asked you yesterday, I'd like them to hear the response. So the, the, the war's over, the, the uh, um, uh, airlift, uh, the Americans and Brits are bringing food into the, to the West Germans, and the line gets drawn East, East Berlin, West Berlin. You didn't live there in that city, but could you talk about that time when Germany was being split in two? Um, yeah, the, the Marshall Plan you're talking about really kind of um, you know, we, uh, we were uh, uh, trying to, I can probably uh, cook potatoes hundred different ways and make them tasteable. Uh, and uh, cook them with water and some kind of grease and things like that. And with uh, a Marshall Plan, they brought in corn. Well, in Germany those days, Corn was fed to the animals. You don't eat them. You don't eat corn. In, in those days, I don't know how it is today, but they were fed to the animals. And all of a sudden, our bread we get was kind of yellow. It was kind of bad. <laughs> but uh, the changes that happened uh, overnight, by the way, too, uh, about six months or a year later, all of a sudden we had a different kind of currency uh, in Germany overnight. The, the night before, uh, you could get it on a black market, probably, and I uh, dealt on a black market. And uh, then it, everybody started with the same amount, almost, of money-wise. And uh, then you had money uh, and to buy legally. And things were very, very much available. Uh, my mother was involved in the uh, area of rationing of people and. Uh, in the city hall of uh, Bukaboy, and uh, it, it's a long story, but uh, to uh, people had certain pieces of paper uh, that cut out and uh, for 50 grams of meat, uh, they cut that out, and then the, the grocery store in turn had to paste it on a piece of paper in order to get food uh, to buy from wholesale to for the retail sales. And uh, so that was going on during the war and then for two, three years after the war, the, the same way. And um, it, uh, but also the black market, the government told you, uh, you can only raise this and that cows and they want to know how many cows or how many pigs. While well, other people have raised pigs and cows in the woods. <laughs> and. Uh, then, uh, then you go and get the meat in the woods. <laughs> and uh, on racing cars, uh, you get double meat if you buy horse meat. By the way, horse meat is not bad. It's, it's very lean, it doesn't have much fat. It's not a ribeye steak, but it's pretty, pretty good. I like ribeye steak. Yeah. <laughs> and um, did I answer your question? 
Well, I mean, did you know? I mean, we just you know hear these stories now yeah. about how the East Germans uh, the wall goes up and I you couldn't get all you know, families were on both sides. And yeah, that, uh, I never went on the other side of the wall after the war, but I heard a lot of horror stories. And one was a good friend of my mother's. She had, in effect, a good girlfriends together when they grew up, and she was a high school teacher, Mamie Genson. But she came shortly after the war was built um, and came overnight. She lived in Magdeburg, that's a, between Hanover and Berlin, and she saved her neck just with a package in her hand uh, and uh, came at night over the border uh, to get to Western Germany. And uh, she became then a teacher uh, in, uh, in Bremen. And, uh, and she came even into this country too once, and I visited with her up in in, uh, in Wyoming with a bus tour. Uh, they're all dead now, so it's my mom. And uh, and one thing too, I uh, tell you, you can have ten different wives or ten, but you only have one mom. And uh, it's very important for you. I don't know if you know all the answers, but to listen to your mom and dad. But you only have one mom. And the way I look at myself, I'm an orphan. I don't have a dad. He was killed early, 45. My mom died about uh, 7th of January uh, uh, in uh, about 14 years ago. Um, they found her dead in her farm in, in, uh, in uh, Denver. Uh, then I had to identify her and carry her out of there, literally. I, I knew a lot about dead people. I, there's nothing worse than uh, dead people smell. I think you did not cover that. Uh, because a lot of them are found in craters and, you know, and there's trouble and this and that. And um, that and flowers. Uh, that and flowers. And, uh, I told my wife, if I should die, and I don't know if I'm going to die or not, but there's a lot of people say they are never going to die physically. But um, don't have flowers at my funeral. That's thick. <laughs> that's, that's bad because it, human flesh and flowers, is, that's a horrible smell. <laughs> this is from my personal experience. So, and I know you're all young people, but you never know. When a man upstairs says, it's your turn, uh, you better be ready uh, uh, for that and try to do the right thing for your fellow men. Remember what I said earlier. We come here with nothing and we leave with nothing, but we can improve our soul. And I think that's one of the main things uh, we can do for ourselves. And how we have helped our fellow man while we were here. And it's an amazing thing, but you give away, it comes back to you in a different kind of way sometimes you least expect. Um, and uh, I'm st uh, strictly speak from experience. I didn't make any of this up, it's just how I learned. Uh, and if you are fortunate enough to learn from your parents, if you love your parents or like your parents or could care less about your parents, uh, I think they own it to you, they're pushing you. And, uh, and that's the way I look at it. I made one time a bad statement to my son, and uh, who lives in Hawaii now, but I'm um, sorry about it, but I didn't say it because the two boys got into each other. And I had to literally uh, take them apart. I mean, it was a close one to or I did the other. But, um, there's nothing worse than family problems, and you want to stop those things in a hurry. And some of you maybe have divorced uh, homes, and uh, try to get along with both of them. Um, and I, you know, I never divorced. I mean, we came probably close sometime, my wife and I. Who the hell are you? you know, things like that. <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> but, you know, that's just when the marriage starts, like, and it starts from me right now. She is not in a good health. She knows that she's been in our house, and uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh, 
this is my toughest assignment is take care of her. And this morning it was kind of bad again, but it is uh, that's the way it is. And uh, she's only uh, 78, and I'm 20, 82 and a half. Um, my next birthday is next month. I'm be being old. Uh, maybe they call me with a folk show uh, to defend our country. <laughs> Any other questions? The bell's going to ring pretty soon. It's, uh, okay. Are you the one that rings the bell? Yeah. No, it'll no, no, no. go on without me. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there's a lot to learn for you, and uh, as I said earlier, anytime we need some suggestions for your life, uh, let me know. I'll get in touch with Bob, and uh, he, he knows how to get me. And uh, we know each other for quite a while. Actually, we met. He told us through my son, Victor. Yeah, I remember that. Remember? I do. Yeah. And uh, we talked uh, to talk some political clubs here, and uh, uh, that's how we got to know each other more. And, uh, that's a great guy. That's a great American. That's an honest American politi political guy. And I, I don't mind saying so, Bob, you give you us your words. But you are you saying that's it? They say you're going to quit and you did. <clears throat> but I wish you'd still be there. <laughs> Maybe you can do some good. We need some. There we go! <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind saying so. Your there's a, there's a great amount.